When it comes to handguns on the market today, there are seemingly thousands and thousands of options from all sorts of manufacturers. And much like the automotive industry, there are almost tiers, if you would, right? Sort of categories that you can split these manufacturers into. We're talking things like action style, right? Revolver versus semi-auto, how they're fired, frame material, even price point, which all can be used to narrow down your options should you be searching for a new handgun in 2022. But despite all of these options and all of the tens of hundreds of thousands of handguns sold each and every single year, there's one that just keeps coming back again and again and again. This polymer framed handgun revolutionized the market as we know it today, and it came from a completely unsuspecting source. Affordable, dependable, and reliable, this particular manufacturer has often been referred to as the Toyota Corolla of the firearm world. I'm Dustin with We The People Holsters, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about perhaps the most dependable gun ever made, period, exclamation point, we're gonna be giving you guys everything you need to know about the history of Glock firearms. The Glock. Glock 7. The Glock 17. The Glock. Glocky! Glock 40, just like yours. Now, as we get started into the history of one of, if not the biggest name in the firearms industry, a quick reminder that if you're looking for a holster for your Glock, you know, be that IWB, OWB, or something like our Freedom line of holsters, then we got you. Check us out, wethepeopleholsters.com, or you can just click the link that goes right here. But we don't just stop at holsters. We've got some of the baddest t-shirts made from dirt to shirt right here in the good old US of A. We're talking American grown cotton sewn in the US, printed in our Las Vegas facility. They're awesome. Plus we also have things like tactical leggings, gun belts that are strong as and much, much more. Seriously, just check it out. I promise you won't regret it. And well, if you do, I'll buy you one chocolate chip cookie from Subway because let's face it, those slap. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, into the video. Now, if you've never dove into the history of Glock Incorporated, then allow me to set the stage for you here, right? The year is 1929, and America is in perhaps one of the most interesting and peculiar times it has ever in its history faced, like ever. For those of you who recall high school history class, 1929 would signal the downturn of the American economy and begin a decade-long period of hardship known as the Great Depression. Across the big pond, however, in the European country of Austria, 1929 looks a little bit different and is significant for a far different reason. July 19th, 1929, a baby boy would be born. A boy who would go on to change the history of firearms the world would know, a man known as Mr. Gaston Glock. Now here's the best part. Mr. Glock would not set out to be a gun manufacturer, right? He'd actually spend his first 50 years inventing, patenting, and producing consumer products for households all across the world. By 1963, Gaston had started his own business, producing curtain rods and other household products in the town of Deutsch Wagram, Austria, which is just a few miles north of the country's capital, Vienna. You know, the, the one from The Sound of Music, right? With the, we're not gonna get into it. Anyways, so this is all fine and dandy, right? But how does a curtain rod manufacturer become perhaps the biggest handgun maker in the world? Here's where it gets good. The year is now 1980. The Walkman hitting the streets for the first time. And not we're not talking like the CD player, we're talking the tape player. The Atari is sweeping the nation and finding itself in homes everywhere across America. And Big League Chew had everyone blowing bubbles much larger than they actually should have been. Meanwhile, in Austria, the Austrian Federal Army had decided it was time to replace their now slightly outdated and aging duty pistol, the Walther P38. Now, don't get me wrong, the P38 was a beautiful gun and served them well for a number of years, but after 40 plus years of service and several world wars, it was time to take a look at shaking things up a bit. So like everything else that the government does, they set it out for a bid, right? The Austrian Federal Army wanted the best that they could get their hands on, so instead of simply ordering, you know, like 25,000 handguns that are available on the market, they opened it up to inventors. 
It had to be self-loading, so it was semi-automatic. Had to be chambered in the NATO designated nine millimeter, and it had to accept a minimum of 17 rounds of ammunition. Additionally, the service pistol had to be able to withstand a series of tests, including a reliability test of over 15,000 rounds and also be capable of firing extreme pressure loads or plus P loads as they're known today. Now at this time in his life, Mr. Gaston Glock has absolutely no experience building firearms at all. Like zero, none, none at all. But despite that lack of firearm knowledge, at 53 years old, yes, he was 53, Mr. Glock had decided that he intended to use his knowledge of plastic materials to design and build his own compact pistol. And after assembling a team of industry specialists, law enforcement personnel, and military experts, they set out to do just that. Fun fact for you guys here, do you know how long it took Gaston Glock and his team of experts to develop their new pistol? It wasn't five years, it wasn't 10 years, it wasn't even two years, oh no. It took Glock and his team a short three months. Yes, you heard that right, 90 whole days to design and build from the ground up a completely new pistol unlike anything ever seen on the market before ever. That's freaking insane. These first few prototypes would be tried against some of the biggest names in the industry. See, it wasn't just Glock who was after this contract. Some of the biggest names in the firearms industry were after it as well. FN, Beretta, H&K, Sig Sauer, and Austria's very own alma mater, Steyr, would all toss their hats into the ring for this one. Now, despite being the newcomer, Glock would reign supreme over all of them with their new design winning the competition with what is now known as the Glock 17. Now, contrary to popular belief, the Glock 17 is not dubbed so because of its capacity of 17 rounds of 9mm. Instead, this all-new handgun got its name from its inventor, Mr. Gaston Glock. Glock was a bit of an inventor and a pioneer and had already had 16 filed and licensed patents in his name before he set out to make this handgun. So naturally, when he filed the patent for this one, it was his 17th. What made the Glock 17 different though was its polymer lower construction, the first of its kind on the market. This made the pistol much lighter than an all steel and walnut construction of some of the other pistols on the market at the time. Don't be confused here. Just because the Glock has a polymer lower does not mean that it doesn't contain metal parts. Things like the slide, the barrel, the trigger group, and more, they're all still made of metal alloys, which means, unfortunately, you won't be able to get it through a metal detector. No, seriously. People actually thought this when it first came out. It's freaking hilarious. Hell, even Hollywood played off this clip with their role in Die Hard. Roll the clip. Some punk stealing luggage. Luggage? That punk pulled a Glock 7 on me. You know what that is? It's a porcelain gun made in Germany. Doesn't show up on your airport x-ray machines here, and it costs more than you make in a month. You'd be surprised what I make in a month. Additionally, to ensure that this new weapon was ready to fire in a moment's notice, Mr. Glock would design this pistol with three internal safety mechanisms to ensure that the pistol would perform consistently while protecting the user against accidental discharges. What you won't find on the Glock 17 is any sort of external safety for this reason. Furthermore, Gaston knew that this new pistol had to be reliable, and for it to be reliable, it had to be simple. So the Glock was designed with as few parts as possible. Even today, your average Glock pistol is made with just 35 individual parts, which is far lower than anything else available on the market. All of this really just sums up to a pistol that is simple, reliable, easy to clean, easy to shoot, time and time again. Now, over the next 40 years, Glock would continue to innovate and pioneer the handgun market. They would provide some of the easiest to use, most reliable firearms available to consumers. But don't take it from us. There is no kidding, hundreds of torture tests on Glocks all over the place. Just check YouTube. We're talking freezing tests, mud tests, water submersion tests, tie it behind your pickup truck and drag it down the road test. And just like that reliable 97 Corolla that your dad had growing up, the Glock just keeps going and going and going. It just doesn't die. As of today, Glock corners somewhere roughly around 65% of the total market share of the handgun industry, which means that in 2021, Glock would sell somewhere in the neighborhood of like 7 million Glock pistols. That's crazy. Based on these numbers, it's no surprise that in America, Glock is nearly a household name. Plus, their reliability has made them the benchmark for law enforcement in the United States of America. 
literally everyone that I've ever met in my life that's into firearms either has a Glock or knows someone who has a Glock. It's not that hard to come by. Either way, one thing is for certain, it's not a bad story for a curtain rod maker from a small town in Austria. But that's enough out of me. What do you guys think about Glocks? Do you own one? Sound off in the comments down below. And if you haven't already yet, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the little notification bell so you can keep up with all the content that's yet to come. With that, my name's Dustin. I'll catch you guys on the next one.